Come see the new quiz show, Go Fact Yourself, with special guests Andy Richter and Fresh Air's Tanya Mosley. It's March 23rd at the Crawford. Get your tickets at las.com slash events. LAS Studios. Today on the LA Report. Shohei Otani's interpreter is fired amid allegations he stole millions of dollars from the Japanese slugger to place bets with a purported illegal bookmaker. Governor Newsom announces a clean air partnership with a major automaker. A big day for California, for jobs, the economy, for cleaning our air, fighting polluters and big pollution. And the governor welcomes news from the primary election on the ballot initiative he's been advocating. Good morning. It's Thursday, March 21st. I'm Suzanne Watley, and you're listening to the L.A. Report from L.A.S. 89.3. The Dodgers have fired Shohei Otani's interpreter. Ipe Mizuhara is a close friend of the Japanese superstar. This is tied to allegations of illegal gambling and theft from Otani, who was playing in Seoul, South Korea, in a two-game series with the San Diego Padres to open the Major League Baseball season. During the first game yesterday, Misuhara was seen regularly chatting with the Dodgers' designated hitter, seemingly discussing his at-bats over a tablet computer. Dodgers manager Dave Roberts said a different interpreter would be used, and he said he did not know of Misuhara's whereabouts. Los Angeles is grappling with a looming budget deficit. The city administrative officer says the mayor and city council need to consider eliminating 2,000 unfilled city jobs to address what could be a projected $475 million shortfall by the end of June. Acting Police Chief Dominic Choi on LAist's Air Talk program warned against eliminating unfilled positions in his department. Unless you have a safe city and you have a strong public safety arm, you don't have a flourishing city or a vibrant city. We are short officers. We are short our police service representatives, those individuals picking up the phone when you call 911. One of the reasons for the city budget deficit is the generous pay raises that the mayor and council approved for police officers last year that will add nearly $400 million to the LAPD's budget by the year 2027. A proposal from Governor Newsom to build housing and mental health treatment beds for Californians experiencing homelessness was narrowly approved by California voters. Guy Marzarati reports on politics for our news partner, KQED. Proposition 1 allows the state to borrow nearly $6.4 billion to build treatment facilities and supportive housing. It also moves existing mental health funding from paying for services to build housing. In a statement, Newsom celebrated the win and called it, quote, the biggest change in decades in how California tackles homelessness. The governor led the Yes campaign, which vastly outspent opponents, but he ran headlong into a more conservative primary electorate, leading to a nail-biter result that took weeks to resolve. For the California Report, I'm Guy Marzarati. Automaker Stellantis has signed a series of agreements with California to meet the state's clean car standards. Those include paying for public charging stations, offering discounts on new vehicles for car share programs in disadvantaged communities, and making sure dealers have zero emission vehicles available. The governor announced the Stellantis agreement this week. A big day for California, uh, for jobs, the economy, for cleaning our air, fighting uh, polluters and big pollution, uh, and advancing our efforts to change the way we produce and consume energy. California has no peers. We want to continue uh, to lead the globe. Stellantis is the fourth largest automaker in the world. Its brands include Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Fiat. The agreement comes days after the release of a report that concludes that the state will need to nearly triple its rate of greenhouse gas reduction to meet its 2030 climate goal. Coming up, L.A. school students will soon have artificial intelligence at their fingertips to help them with assignments and other tasks. Imagine if you could charge your electric vehicle at the places you already love to eat, shop, and play. Whether you're at the movies, on your weekly grocery trip, or running errands at your local mall, Volta EV charging stations are built around your day-to-day and located in your community and nationwide. All you have to do is check in, plug in, and go about your day. It's EV charging made convenient. Download the Volta app to find your new favorite place to charge. 
Back now to the L.A. report. The University of California system has taken a step forward in prohibiting academic groups from posting political language on their websites. L.A.'s higher education correspondent Adolfo Guzman Lopez reports on a ban that the Board of Regents is considering. The plan would forbid UC academic departments, labs, institutes, or schools from posting political speech on their main websites, but would allow such language on faculty pages and other website pages. Supporters say this rule is needed after the current Israel-Hamas war led to heated language, activism, and actions on campuses. And posting political speech isn't essential for the running of academic departments and other units. The regents meeting in Los Angeles have voted to delay consideration of the proposal until they reconvene in May. A new AI platform is coming to the Los Angeles Unified School District. LAS reporter LEU says it's for students and their parents. Students can log on to this new portal called Ed. It's sort of like a one-stop shop where they can learn about their current grades, their assignments, what's for lunch, or where their bus is. They'll have access to an AI chatbot named Ed where they can ask questions in real time in 100 languages. District officials say the platform is aimed to democratize information and allow students access to data the district already has. They say students will get individualized action plans through the program. I'm Ellie Yu. In the weather forecast, low clouds and fog will clear to sunshine, maybe some haze this afternoon. Temperatures will range from the upper 60s to mid-70s. Thank you for listening to the L.A. Report. You can read more news at LAist.com or listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. The AM edition is hosted and produced by me, Suzanne Watley, with assistance from producer Tyler Wayne. Our engineer is Federico Garcia Rodriguez. Catherine Mailhouse is the director of content development. LAist's executive editor is Megan Garvey. Original music by Scott Kelly. Check back here at 4 for the PM edition. Listeners like you help make the LA Report possible. Please donate at laist.com slash join. And the L.A. Report is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. I'm Julia Paskin, host of Weekend Edition. Join me as I talk with NPR's Sarah McCammon about her new book, The Exvangelicals, Loving, Living, and Leaving the White Evangelical Church. She's not alone in leaving the church. She's found she's among a rising generation fleeing the fold. That's April 25th at the Crawford in Pasadena. Tickets at laist.com slash events.